Hi, I'm Doug Taylor, the CEO of the Smith Family. Uh, and today I'm joined by Christian Corsi, who's the principal of Rudy Hill High School and also a board member of the Smith Family. And we really appreciate the leadership that she provides in her community and also with the Smith Family. And today we're having a conversation about the future of education uh, in our country. Good day, Chris. Good morning. Um, so to start off with, um, and you've been involved in education for a long time, um, and I think you have some fantastic insights. So from your perspective, what do you think is great about the Australian education system? Look, I think one of the things that we need to recognise about Australia is how well our students overall do. Australia is one of the highest performing education systems in the world. And sometimes we worry a lot about international test measures for eight-year-olds and 12-year-olds and 16-year-olds. But if we look at our data of what happens when our students leave school and where they are, at age 25, Australian young people are more likely to have employment, are more likely to have a university degree or a tertiary qualification, and are more likely to have stable housing than any of the other countries who are seen as the high performers, particularly the Asian Tigers. And sometimes we don't think about the fact that education isn't about the snapshots we're doing on the way through, but it's where our young people then have the opportunity to go with their own lives for their very school. Yeah, it's a great point. Take the kind of long-term view as to the yeah. trajectory of young people. Great insight. So there is a lot to celebrate, and historically too, we've been so well served by a great education system. What do you think are some of the kind of critical challenges in education today that are top of mind for you uh, in your work? Look, I think there's a couple of things that are really important to understand. Even though we are a great performing, highly performing system, we have slipped in the OECD measures so that we are now one of the most unequal education systems in the OECD. Um, the data is pretty clear on that. And the problem that we have is that that inequality is growing. So what that means is that we have a group of young people, somewhere between 10 and 30%, depending on which state or territory you're in, who are significantly disadvantaged from when they start school and significantly disadvantaged as they try to transition from school. And there are a number of reasons for that. But if Australia does not get this right in the next five to ten years, we will entrench poverty, we will entrench um, disadvantage when we have an opportunity to really turn that around at this stage. I think this is almost our last shot at doing this. Our funding, particularly for our government schools where the majority of disadvantaged young people attend in their local communities, has not kept pace um, with what is needed for a high-performing education system. And one particular area for me as a secondary principle that I always think about is the digital divide. To do well in a high-performing system like ours, our secondary students have to have not only access to technology and devices, but the capacity to use them, not for social media, no. but for academic um, work. And increasingly, if they can't, they will be left out. Thank you. So it really is an important moment uh, for our nation as it relates to education reform. And, um, you, you know, you and I have talked about uh, our interest the Smith family for all young people to get a great education. You certainly share that commitment around reducing that divide as it relates to digital access. So, of course, the National School Reform Agreement, the review of that is underway and the Education Minister, Jason Clare, has highlighted the importance of equity in those reforms. I'm wondering, Christine, what, what do you think are some of the, if that was a success, those reforms, what would you need to see featured in the, in the SRA going forward? So there, there are the five um, terms of reference. And the first one relates, of course, to um, student outcomes. I think secondary um, principals and teachers and, and communities would really like to see those outcomes remaining broad. We do have some high-quality end-of-school credentials high school certificate in New South Wales, um, the SACE in South Australia, etc. Those credentials test on a range of internal and external measures. They always include a, a sub-school-based assessment. Many of those credentials also made 
address multiple pathways. So I think one of the things we'd be particularly keen to see in that first term of reference is to see um, the outcomes kept broad as they are at that level, but critically for it to be not only anxious year 12 completion, but year 12 or the equivalent. Because we are really in this country behind the top countries like Germany, uh, for example, in terms of our vocational provision and in terms of pathways that take you on alternatives to university. The second um, term of reference relates to wellbeing. And we do know that the, the data around um, students' wellbeing post COVID, um, there's quite a bit of information and evidence coming out now that it has had a far more significant impact, particularly on children who were in year four, five, and six in primary school, making that transition to the high school setting. And I do think that uh, one of the things that the NSRA is able to do is to ensure that there is sufficient funding going into schools to address some of those wellbeing needs in schools. However, that's not our major problem. One of our major problems is that there really aren't, in most states and territories, the wellbeing and mental health services are fragmented. Um, they're, 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 they lack cohesion. Uh, it's not unusual, for example, for a young person who's really very unwell to have to wait 12 to 18 months to see a psychiatrist um, to get a diagnosis. And in a very wealthy country like this, it's probably something we need to look at pretty closely. But related to that as well, we know that one of the keys for adults and young people for a good wellbeing is opportunities for employment. And Peter Shergold, I mean, his report um, talked very much about having employment in community um, so that young people don't have to travel miles or leave home. Because for some of our most disadvantaged young people, that is never going to be an option. So how do, we, how do we, as a very smart country, get that employment closer to where young people live um, and into those kinds of occupations that we need? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. And, and you know, that really resonates with me and certainly um, how we're thinking about it. Smith Family, you've helped us with that thinking as well in terms of ensuring that all young people have the resources they need for a great education, that young people have the opportunity to catch up when they fall behind and, and also that they're future ready for a very different working yeah. environment in the future. Um, and just finally, um, Kristen, you've been involved with Smith Family for a long time. You're a supporter, yeah. um, one of our donors. We appreciate that. Um, what's your kind of insight as to how the Smith Family can make a, an ongoing and, a, and even a bigger contribution uh, to supporting young yeah. people in Australia? Yeah, so to put that in context, um, Doug, I think there's two things the Smith Family for me has always really stood out in, in terms of the relationship with the education sector and particularly the schools with whom Smith Family works. Uh, one is the um, the ability to be the interface between the school and the home, mm -hmm. to not try to do what schools do, no. but to actually provide a um, you know a support. When we did the catch up program mm -hmm. for, for young people during COVID, what it was it was like providing a tutor for families mm -hmm. who have a tutor, but it really worked. And those are the kinds of interfaces that in more affluent families have taken for granted that if your child needs assistance beyond school, you can provide it. The second thing that the Smith family has done, and I think set a benchmark for, um, is the, in the provision of data and, and information. And it is, in fact, the Smith family's own very seminal report about the predict, best predictors of year 12 completion being attendance and the English grade in year 8, not that plan, the English grade in year 8 that I think set a benchmark for how we could look differently. So the last three terms of reference um, that the um, uh, National School Reform Agenda looks at, one is uh, around the supply of teachers and the retention of teachers. For my organisations like the Smith family are going to be at the very front of what is in reality now a teacher crisis. Mm -hmm. We have a teacher shortage crisis. Mm -hmm. A lot of the recommendations that have been made aren't going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Smith family will be increasingly asked to fill some gaps right. in, to support families in communities where we don't have mm -hmm. sufficient. Um, I also think that the last two mm -hmm. um, recommendations of the, um, uh, of the National School Reform Agreement one relating to data collection and the other to accountability and transparency. 
Um, I think the Smith family set a benchmark there, and I'm hoping that the NSRA will pay attention to that um, because I do think the work isn't going to be less. Um, we have a short term crisis. Um, the work the Smith family does in that space will support some families who otherwise wouldn't get any support. And where we put those children, even more at risk than they are now. So I see it as being. It's challenging, yeah. but what an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Look, thank you. Thanks so much for those terrific insights and for your leadership in our organisation and the wider community. We really appreciate that. And, and hopefully that's given you some great insights into the future education of education in Australia so that all young people uh, can make the most wonderful gift of a terrific education. Thanks so much. Thank you.